welcome you today you're worthy 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 Lord we welcome you Jesus Jesus 
You know, his glory is here. Oh, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. His resurrection, life, his healing anointing is here. The Bible says the power of the Lord was present to heal. Hallelujah. I tell you, the power of the Lord is present to heal today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Psalm 31, uh, we're in verse 19. Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you in the presence of the sons of men. You know, God has laid up his great goodness for us today. Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up. Everyone say, which you have laid up for us who fear you. Everyone say, you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you. If you believe it, give him a wave. Kevin, what's your testimony about? Oh, a progressive healing and deliverance. In June, uh, it's about when I started coming to the meetings, I was going through a period which was about three months almost bed fast. It's hard to explain. Um, the doctors couldn't find anything really physiologically wrong, but uh, they said it had to do with mental health and psychosomatic symptoms. And, so you uh, came to a meeting uh, about two weeks ago. Ke Kevin Petrie, power God's on you, Kevin. Power God's on you. What's the problem? Uh, it, it's the whole body system that's working. Sometimes it's really heavy and sometimes it's light and sometimes it's easy and it's not. So this uh, affects your walking? Yeah. How long you had this for? Uh, quite a few months. You believe that Jesus Christ will year. do it? Yes. You believe that by his stripes you have already been healed? Yes. That's the power of God coming uh -huh. on you. That's the Lord delivering you. That's the Lord delivering you. <laughs> this spirit of sickness is coming out of you. <laughs> That's the power of God going through you. Spirit of sickness coming out of you, Kevin. In Jesus' mighty name, we command all sickness come out of him. Come out of him. Come out of his muscles. Come out of his body. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That's the mighty power of Jesus Christ going through you, Kevin, delivering you of this curse, delivering you and setting you free by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. I tell you what you are seeing now is a demonstration of the justice of the kingdom of God that I was preaching about. No matter how this spirit got in, there is mercy in Jesus Christ to heal and deliver. You're free. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy. There is joy. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy. There is joy, there is joy in the house of the Lord, there is joy in the house of the Lord, there is joy, there is joy, and I just can't stop raising his name, I just can't stop raising his name, I just can't stop raising his name Jesus oh there is joy in the house of the Lord there is more in the house of the Lord there is more there is more there's more Kevin what do you feel happening <laughs> Are you trying to say something? Peach. <laughs> no. 
hate travel. You feel <laughs> hate? Joy. Yeah, I felt how I go through and shake even. You felt what? You speaking, I was, even when you were preaching, I was shaking. And I was going through me, through my legs. And, oh, oh. Kevin, receive more. You want more? <laughs> receive it in Jesus' name. Yes, yeah. Holy fire. Are you married, Kevin? No, no. You got family? I have mother, brother, and two sisters. Lord, let this same power go through the family in Jesus' yes. name. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And Lord, whoever is hassling Kevin, let that power go through him, through that person in Jesus' name. Whoever is causing him trouble, Lord, let the power of God go through them. Set them free too, Lord. Bring healing and reconciliation. <laughs> You'll get us all laughing here. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Are you able to get off your seat and demonstrate what the Lord has done, Kevin? I'll go have a walk forward. Talk to us, it's Kevin. Easier. It's much easier usually after I get off of the chair. I feel very heavy and oh, awkward. But that was a lot easier. Okay, get up and yeah. bend over. Move. Come on, demonstrate what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Kevin's bending over. <laughs> Sorry? I just touched my toes. I haven't been able to do that in years. You haven't been able to touch your toes in years. Look at him now. No. Hallelujah. I just touched the, I just touched the floor. <laughs> That's better than what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, some star jumps there, Kevin. <laughs> it's probably been years since you've done star jumps, Kevin. <laughs> there he goes. How long has it been since you've done that? Oh, uh, definitely, definitely uh, got to be into the long months and years. Long Didn't months and years. Make All right, come back and share what the Lord has done later too. We love you, Kevin. Love you. Thank you so much. And you got drunk with laughter and I said that you were delivered. Yes. So... What the doctors said is psychosomatic, we understand was a demon. Yes. So anyway, go back. You're, you're, so what was your circumstance? You're, you're, you're almost bedridden. Did you have pain or what, what was the problem? Uh, some levels of pain, very hard to walk. Uh, I thought I was going to die, basically. And the, the doctors couldn't do that much. Um, I bought a tablet so I could hook up with the meetings. And I was getting uh, prayer with the prayer helpers over periods of time, and uh, I've seen a change over the, the months. I'm now uh, doing more, um, not bedridden. And during the bedridden time, I was listening to Bible and healing ministries all day virtually. And uh, then gradually, the, the getting better, the touches of God have been getting really good. And I had that really big hit of uh, holy laughter and fire a couple of weeks ago, and I've been doing more walking better, more exercise, uh, driving now, uh, more work around the house. And you know, Jesus the is the resurrection and the life. It was Jesus who took you off your bed and delivered yes. you from the fear of dying and delivered you of uh, that evil spirit. So you're free. Right. Yes. Because sometimes uh, doctors can't figure out what the problem is and you, the, the problem is in the spiritual realm. And it, it, you have to go in the spirit of God to deal with your, the problem. Uh, man, man can't fix, a doctor can't fix a problem like this. Medication's not going to get him off the sickbed. It's a demon. And it's only the power of Jesus Christ that works. Someone give Jesus a wave and say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Put your hand on your chest and say, I'm next. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Carol over here is with her granddaughter. Welcome, sweetie. Mika wants to, to thank the Lord. Megan, what is your testimony about? Amita. Well, I got um, 
chooks, and one of them were about to uh, die. It was really sick, and her name's Planty. And when Grandma prayed for Planty, and I was praying, and then it got all better, and then we changed the name to Bravey because it was really brave. <laughs> So did the the chook? Did the chook? Did the chicken die, or was it, was it badly sick? Oh, it was that sick that it couldn't walk for a five to six days? And really, when I have a hen like that, it usually dies. So it's a really miracle that it really healed. Was healed. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, sweetie, who heals dying chooks? Jesus. Uh, Jesus yeah. does. Amen. You know, uh, Carol, I heard a story of uh, a lady who, uh, who raised, uh, you know, cattle and she had a, a, a dying cow. It was, you know, it was sick and so on. So she prayed for the cow. The Lord raised it up and she sent it straight to the butchers to be slaughtered. <laughs> All right, we'll let you go. Bless you, Carol. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's good to laugh in the presence of the Lord, isn't it? I seem to remember you, Judy. Um, as we were worshipping, I had a frozen shoulder. And look. Wow. Look at that. Sarah, you there? Look at that. Isn't that amazing? So what movement did you have in your shoulder before, Judy? Show us. I could only move it a little bit. It froze when I was working out. I went to the chiropractor and she said, I think your shoulder's frozen. So um, it was very painful. I said, I got to get on tonight with this ministry. Hallelujah. And as we were worshiping, I put my hands up. I said, Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! What song did it happen in? Um, was it one of the upbeat songs? No. One of the slow ones. No. The slow one. And I, I was like this, and then I just put my hands up and I said, oh, well, I can move it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Run up here, Sarah. And uh, come on, Sarah, run up here. Isn't this wonderful? The Lord healed this lady while you're worshipping the Lord. So, uh, you know, uh, Judy, uh, I think that, la that set of worship that Sarah did was one of the best I've heard her do. Uh, I just love the praise and the worship, and particularly the praise. She knows I'm into praise. So, uh, so what, what do you say, uh, Sarah? What are you experiencing, Sarah, when you're worshipping? Um, just Jesus, because Jesus is everything, and he does it all. And... Um, when you set the Lord before you, as Psalm 16 says, and you see him before you, um, your whole world changes. And Judy, that's the fire of God all in your room. That's the fire of God. That's the fire of God. Paul, do you feel that, Sarah? Yeah. What does that feel like? It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome, awesome. Jesus. Jesus, you got one of those slow songs again? Hallelujah. Yeah. Hmm? Oh, praise yeah. God. What do you feel happening there, Judy? It's just, it's, oh, it's oh, peace. The it's glory. so awesome, his peace. And I'm tingly everywhere. Of your presence. That was it. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> we, your temple, give me the words, give you glory. So arise to your rest and be blessed by our praise as we glory. In your embrace, as your presence now fills this place. Hallelujah. Who healed you, Judy? Jesus Christ, and he's Lord. Amen. Thanks, Sarah. Who, who prayed for you? 
No one did. Just healed by Jesus. Amen. Thanks, Jody. A thumbs up for Jesus. Amen. Brett had a, a toe that had swollen up with a tumour. Exactly. Um, yes. And they wanted to cut the foot off, wasn't it? Right. Oh, yes. And last yeah. year the Lord healed the toe miraculously and it was like a, like a fountain of pus came out. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> And the Lord healed that yes, toe, yes. and they Amen. were, and that toe may have been caused by diabetes. What what did they diagnose yes. with with diabetes? Um, seven was seven point something. Is it type two, type one? What what was it? Type was it's type two. Type two. Type two diabetes. But praise God! So you went to the doctor, and no diabetes. No, it's gone. Wow! Praise God, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Who healed you of diabetes? Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. did. Amen. All right. Thank you very much. Rachel Grace. Thank what, you. What's your testimony about? I, yes, my testimony is about healing. Uh, yes, I had three days of intense pain on my left side of the ear. And on that day, on 10th, I had to go to the emergency because the pain was so intense. But after the ENT doctor checked, he said that my jaw has shifted and I have muscle infection. So he told me that I have to see a dental surgeon. But then that night, I came to, for this meeting, because he in Germany is so morning, early in the morning at 3. And there was a sister who gave a testimony of how God did an operation in her body, in her internal organs. So I kept on reaching out by faith. I had such pain. And then during the breakout session, um, uh, Brother Joe prayed for me and I had a clack. It was really strong and I got completely healed. Rachel Ehrenberg. Hello, Rachel. What do you need from I, the Lord? Yes, I've had the last three days very strong pain from my ear. And today I went to see the doctor and he told me that my jaws have shifted and so I'm having muscle infection and I'm believing God to bless all my jaws that they may be back where they're supposed to be. Amen. Yep. Thank you, Lord. Father, we believe and pray and ask you now to heal this jaw, to straighten this jaw in Jesus' name. I'm seeing Amen. the socket. That's the paragon on the socket on the Amen. right side. In the yep. mighty name of Jesus Christ, it's been healing, 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 flowing through the socket in Jesus' name. Just open your mouth, open and close your mouth. Thank you, Lord, for healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Was it clicking before? Was it clicking? No. No, okay. I just, I believe heard, a click. I just heard a click. That's why. How's that? Yeah, there's a click, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the power of God Hallelujah. realigning your jaw. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. How's that now? It's a relief, a great relief. Thank you. You're healed. And I did have to go and see the dental surgeon, and I, I'm completely healed, and my jaw went back. Hallelujah. What's your testimony about, sister? So I have been suffering from what's called post-acute withdrawal syndrome for six months. What's that? Um, well, basically this medication that I'm on, which is an antidepressant, is very difficult to get off of. And even a small reduction resulted in disability for Okay, me. so like, that was the problem. So now what happened? You got prayer? Yes, I got prayed for it in August and before that in July as well. So I've had two prayer sessions so far. And in August, um, which was the last one that I attended, uh, you prayed for me and my headaches have been healed. So these were headaches caused by the addiction from the medication? Yes. The yes. So how do these headaches affect you? So the headaches are pretty much gone now, but 
you were saying, which it felt like there was like a vice on my head is how it felt. You know, uh, it's Severin is your name? Yeah, Severin, yeah. Severin, sorry. Jesus loves you, Severin. Would you like to follow him? Yes. Would you like to follow him? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. That's wonderful. Well, look, listen carefully to the message. I'm going to talk about following Jesus today, okay? Okay. God loves you. Who healed your headaches? Jesus. Uh, Christina Chup. Hello, Christina. I remember your name. So last week um, you said there's a fire in my in my stomach, and it was actually – um, it was waking me up at night and it was like a burning. I'm seeing a fire in someone's stomach. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right. What do you feel happening, Christina? I've had it the last couple of days, if that's what it is. Yeah, like a, like a, a burning. Do you have any problems, Christina? Um, I found out that my... Um, lymphatic system is uh, blocked up and um, my liver is get, giving me red spots all over my skin. It's been doing that for about 10 years, but it's really accelerated. And then I also have found, just found a mass uh, here and then I have a bulge here and something else over here. So I've got Put your hand on your tummy. Put your hand on your tummy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We command everything out of her tummy, out of her abdomen, out, out. Everyone pray, out, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. All darkness. All darkness, we command you out of Christina. She is the temple, the living temple of God where his spirit dwells. You have no legal right here. Come on, out in Jesus' mighty name. Be loose from her. Thank you, Lord. Power of God, power of God, power of God, power of God. I see you being set free, Christina. I see you being set free. Set free. That's the, the peace and gentleness of Jesus Christ going through you. It's his healing power going right through you. What do you feel happening, Christina? <laughs> cough it out. Cough it out. <laughs> cough it out. This is the spirits that are causing your sickness coming out of you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There it goes, coming out, it's coming out, it's coming out. Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray against this mass in Jesus' name. Pray against this mass. We take you under the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. We command you out of her chest in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. That's the power of God, power of God, power of God on you, Christina. Power of God on you. What do you feel happening? I feel like I just got done running a race or something, but I can tell something is not my stomach anymore. The Lord set you free. And it was hurting me a lot, and every time I ate, I wish I would not have eaten. And you said that it's, that it's coming up and it's coming out. And it has, it has, since um, just a couple of days ago, I finally ate for the first time all day long and it was nothing. And just one time since that I've had it, I don't know what was going on. And then you also prayed for, um, I told, told you that I have a mass. So I, I found out um, I have a couple masks, um, and but they're just cysts. And I found out that they're not cancerous. So praise God. Hallelujah. Um, and a couple weeks before and that, more. Yes, a couple weeks. Before, it's it's awesome because a couple weeks before that, um, I had been in with the 
in, the, in one of the breakout rooms and I had uh, asked for prayer for for these this and um, the w one of them felt from the from the Lord that it was a spirit of death and he prayed against it and um, there's an 80 some year old guy in the in the area that I knew and I went to him and asked him to pray for it and he felt the same thing so um, two nights ago. I came home from church and I was there in the kitchen and um, I just, I just felt, felt here right here by my chest and the, the hard lump had gone way down to a pea size and it just rose up from my spirit, just laughter. And I just, I just knew God's taking care of it. So what they thought might've been cancerous, they said was a cyst and now the cyst has shrunk how big was it originally? Um, I would say it was like a football size, like an inch and a half long and, and then like around. And, and then over here, there was like a like a mass. I can still feel that a little bit, but um, it's because my lymphatic system is plugged up. So I'm just I'm just believing all that's going to clear up, too. <laughs> and my Amen. liver stopped up, they said. So I'm like, OK, we're going to take care of all of this. <laughs> So you had an inch and a half uh, potentially tumor, and now that's shrunk to a pea. Yep. I just have to be right at the right angle because it's it, it just yeah it just keeps. That's all right. So. Keep, it just uh, keeps going down. Just keeps going down. So it's getting more and more difficult mm -hmm. to find. And the other mm -hmm. one you were saying shrunk as well, did it? Um, yes, because it was it was more like on, on a surface level, and it was it was more like tough under the skin, and it's it's pretty much squishy. That one was like about three inches round, and, and it's now I don't know maybe just an inch or so. Three inches, and now it's gone down to one inch. <laughs> yeah. Wow! Yeah. Isn't he worthy? Isn't he worthy? Okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to go to Naomi. And Naomi, uh, did you suffer from endometriosis? Yes. So tell us uh, what endometriosis is and tell us what the Lord has done. And I found out that my issue is actually due to the cause of imbalanced hormones. And I began to pray for restoration of my hormones. I began to command uh, God's healing power and restoration of my hormones to come back to normal. And I say, praise God, uh, last month, in September, yes, uh, God actually healed me completely of this uh, blood issue and I am restored. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Did I you am get, healed did, Amen. Did you receive prayer in any of the meetings? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I actually received a few prayers. The reason why I came to JAM is because of this issue. And I received prayers from some prayer helpers. And yet the, the, the system persists until I know what actually happened to me and begin to command healing and restoration to the right issue, the cause of it. And I say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Title of the message is that Jesus said, "Follow me." So I've got on my my TV screen. You know, the Jesus invites us to follow Him. I believe that one of the great commands. One of the great words of Jesus was, follow me, follow me, follow me. And those words resonate, echo from generation to generation till today. He's saying to you, follow me, follow me. Follow me, you know, no matter what rubbish is around you, what temptation for resentment, what difficulties you find yourself in, Jesus speaks to us today. 
follow me. And you know, truly, to follow Jesus is to walk in the glory. Now, Lord, I pray that those who are listening, those under the influence of my voice, would hear your voice, would hear you speaking to them to follow you. And they would know what it means to turn to you, to leave the stuff that displeases you and to follow you. Bless this message to your glory, Jesus, and your kingdom. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, I'm going to ask Michael to get up here for a moment. Uh, he doesn't know what he's doing, but come on, Michael. Come up here. Come into the camera. Just zoom out. Thanks on the camera. And uh, so, so, Michael, you just stand over here. You don't have to say anything. Zoom out. Thanks. And uh, so I'm going to follow Michael. It shouldn't be that hard. Off you go, Michael. Take a walk. Don't go too fast to the camera guy. And come up back up here, Michael. And that's pretty easy because... I don't fall off the step. Uh, that's pretty easy because I, I can see Michael. Is that right? So I don't even have to know Michael. He could be a complete stranger and I could choose to follow him. Keep going. So I could just follow Michael, right? But what if Michael disappeared? Off you go. What if we can't see Michael? Then how are we going to follow him? The disciples said to Jesus, where are you going? And Jesus said to them, you know the way. And they said, well, no, Lord, we don't know the way. And he said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So Jesus says, follow me, but he, he's not physically present. You can't see him. The only way of following Jesus is if you know him in the spirit realm. Because you cannot follow Jesus with your natural eyes. You hear what I'm saying? The only way of following Jesus is to follow him in the spirit. And that means you must know him. So we take a spirit-filled believer and we take a non-Christian and we say, Jesus is present, I want you to follow him. The non-Christian like, looks around like you're an idiot, like you're crazy. But the, the spirit-filled Christian, by the grace of God, his eyes are open, sees Jesus walking and off he goes following Jesus because he knows him. You cannot follow Jesus unless you know him. You know... Recording in progress. Thank you, everyone, for not turning on your record buttons. <laughs> so, uh, Jesus said in John 10, verse 2, But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name stopped. and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Just an aside here, you know, Christians who follow strange voices, you can get to know the voice of Jesus by meditating on the word of God. That is his voice. The deeper you go by the Holy Spirit in the word of God, the more his voice is heard clearly in your spirit. If you're, if you're confused, if you're following strange voices, open your Bible, ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. 
And Jesus goes on in John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. For you to follow Jesus, he has to know you. You know, Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, shed his blood, he paid the price for our sins so that we could come into a relationship with with God the Father. So to follow Jesus is to believe that the blood of Jesus has atoned for your sins, that you are forgiven, that your sins are cleansed. And through faith in Jesus Christ and his shed blood, you are now in a relationship with the Father. To follow Jesus is to believe in him. So because Jesus is spirit, one day he will come again. But right now we know him in the spirit. So to follow Jesus, you must know Jesus in your heart in the spirit of God. So we read in 1 John 2.27, But the anointing which you have received from him abides. That means it remains and lives in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. It's not possible to follow Jesus. It's not possible to abide in him without the anointing. It's not possible to have a walk with Jesus without the Holy Spirit because Jesus is spirit and we know him in the spirit and we follow him in the spirit. Your spirit born again by the spirit of God is alive to know Jesus and to follow him. Yes, there is the Lord. That is his way. That is his voice. I hear him speaking to me. I'm going this way. Thank you, cameraman. I am going this way. I'm following Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But you can't do that without the Holy Spirit. A Christian without the Holy Spirit, it's not possible. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us. We know that we are in relationship with Jesus Christ because he has given us of his spirit. How can you follow Jesus? You have to know him in the spiritual realm by the spirit of God. The spirit of Jesus Christ indwells you and you are in relationship with him. Praise God. Someone say praise God. So Jesus is the master and we are following the master as his servants. Now let me, let me go a little, shall we go deeper? Go a little bit deeper. When you follow Jesus, it's not like me following Michael around the room. I'd probably end up asking Michael, where are you going? To follow Jesus is simply to be with him. Let me say it again. To follow Jesus is simply to be with him wherever he is. John 12, 25, he who loves his life will lose it and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. Where I am, there my servant will be also. To follow Jesus is simply to be with him. Wherever he goes, you're with him. The Christian life, following Jesus, is not, if you can understand me, is not really about, Lord, what do you want me to do next year? You you want me to study? You want me to do this? You want me to do that? It's, you know, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? These are often questions of the human mind. I'm not saying they're bad questions, but following Jesus is, is about abiding in him. It's about being wherever he is. 
It's about intimate fellowship through the Holy Spirit with him. The question is not where you're going with God, but whether you are with him, whether you are abiding in his presence. Because when you follow Jesus and when you walk with him, very often it's like being blindfolded. Or to put it another way, you can't see the path beyond him. You see him, but you can't see beyond him. But it doesn't matter if you can't see beyond him because all that matters is that you can see him. And you are diligently trusting him and believing and relying upon him. And the mere fact that you're with him is all that really matters. You know, with this pandemic and everything, there's been a lot of confusion and so on. You know, I don't know what I'm doing next year specifically, but it doesn't really matter because I know that we are with him. Amen. And the future is in the palm of his hand. It's okay. And, you know, when he's when he walks, we'll follow him wherever he's going. Hallelujah. It's, it's a life of faith. Following Jesus is a life of faith. You don't need to know where you're going. If I'm following Michael, I need to know where I'm going. But if I'm following Jesus, it's okay. I can rest in him and trust him. Praise God. When you walk with Jesus, he'll never walk in sin. To walk with Jesus is a walk of holiness. It's a walk of repentance. It's a walk of brokenness. It's a walk of, the Bible says that God will not despise a broken and contrite heart. For God dwells with the humble. It's a, a walk of humbling ourselves before God, examining our heart before him and repentance, relying upon him and walking in righteousness. If you are practicing sin deliberately and you think it's okay, let me tell you that God does not walk with you in your sin. Jesus walks his own path. And if you want to walk with him, you have to walk on his path. And his path is righteousness. Hallelujah. Jesus said in so we, we read in 1 John 3, 5, And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. It's not saying that as a Christian you never sin. It's saying that you don't abide in sin, that you don't walk in sin that you don't deliberately practice and keep on in your sin. When Jesus Christ reveals to you that something is sin, then you genuinely repent and you turn from it. You make a commitment in your heart that you're not going to do that anymore. Hallelujah. Jesus said in John 15, 4, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. The mind wants to know the strategy, the goals, how we're going to get there. But Jesus says, just come abide in me, have fellowship with me, and I will make your life fruitful. But the world says you have to do this, this marketing, this, that, and the other. And Jesus says, I will make you fruitful. You know, I've told the story, but um, I went through a, a season of suffering and, uh, and uh, with, with divorce and cancer and all sorts of stuff. And uh, then at the end of that, the Lord said to me, would it be all right if I expanded the ministry? And I said, well, yes, Lord, whatever you want to do. And then <laughs> he did it. <laughs> he did it. You know, uh, uh, it wasn't something I did. You know, I didn't do any marketing, uh, nothing. He just 
just blew on it. You know, God is more than able to make a great success of your life. God is more than able to prosper you. God is more than able to take something that is not going anywhere. He's more than able to take little Abigail, who, who's non-functioning pretty much, and to give her a photographic memory and to give her intelligence and to give her social skills and make her, quote unquote, very normal. He's very capable of doing the same thing in your life. He's capable of prospering your life, of making you fruitful. So why don't you just let go and abide in him and let him do his work? Hallelujah. You can touch your mind and say, mind, calm down and let Jesus do it. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So now just follow Jesus. Just follow him and give up. <laughs> without me, Jesus said, you can do nothing. So just give up. Just say to yourself, self, give up. Now let go and let God. Amen. You know, our part is obedience. It's not doing things because we don't trust God. It's doing things because we do trust him. So where is Jesus going to take you? Here's some thoughts. He's going to take you where he is. He will take you in a life of prayer. He will take you into communion with himself. He will take you into a revelation of himself, of his goodness. He will take you into the delight and joy of the word of God. He will take you into this supernatural delight of his word where the word becomes your first love. He will take you into holiness and repentance and transform your life so that you are more like Jesus. He will take you into practical love for other people, for the poor and for the disadvantaged. As you did it to one of the least of these, so you did it unto me. He will take you into self-denial and to be a blessing to, to others because it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. He will take you into a harvest of souls he will take you to bring glory to his name among sinners. He will take you and cause you to become a fisher of men and women. That is where Jesus will take you. He will take you into his glory. Hallelujah. He will take you on a road that you never anticipated and do things that you never imagined. For the Bible says, my ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. Hallelujah. You know, uh, to know Jesus is to believe in him. 2 Timothy 1.12 just munch on this. Put it in your mouth like a chewing gum. For I know whom I have believed. For I know whom I have believed. The one, you look back on your life and you see the faithfulness of God. You see the goodness of God. I know whom I have believed. Listening to Keith today. And he said, well, I was born again as a young, young person and he's been the foundation of my life. He knows him in whom he has put his faith. I know whom I have believed and am persuaded. What is faith? Faith is the persuasion that God is real. Jesus is his son. 
and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. So we have the invitation to follow me. So Sarah is going to be up in a moment. The invitation is there. Follow me, follow me. Those great words of Jesus, Matthew 4, 18. Jesus says, he's walking by the Sea of Galilee. He sees Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother. They're casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. Then he says to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Then immediately they left their nets and followed him. If you want to follow Jesus Christ, one thing is required of you, obedience. You must obey Jesus Christ. Walk the path that he walks. Walk with him and be with him. Obedience. Believe on him and then obey him. So Sarah's got a, thanks Alpha on the camera. Sarah's got a great song. Thank you, Sarah. Jesus may not be comfortable. Hallelujah. I can think uh, by God's grace of some of the mission trips 
you know, uh, and they weren't always comfortable. I remember in Vanuatu and uh, we were near one of the volcanoes on the island of Tanna and uh, I just thought that Vanuatu would be a very hot place and but we, because we were so high up, it was freezing at night and uh, I put on all my clothes and I was staying in a grass hut and uh, a certain scribe came and said to Jesus, Matthew 8, 19, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. So if you just want a comfortable life, you know, Jesus promised us that, you know, it may not be easy. When you follow Jesus, you'll have to leave your lifestyle of sin. Matthew 9, 19, as Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. He was a man who made his living from corruption. That's what the tax collectors were known for, corruption. And Jesus said, follow me. So he arose and followed him and never went back to it. Never go back to your sin. When you make a decision to follow Jesus, you get up and you leave it, even if it means changing your lifestyle. Jesus said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. You know, it is a wonderful thing. Nothing to compare with it. Walking with Jesus. Walking in the light. To follow Jesus is to give up. That's right. To give up your say over your life. Because when you follow Jesus... The Bible says that you have been bought with a price and you do not belong to yourself. So what was once your life and you had to say over it is no longer your life. It has been bought at a price. The blood of Jesus Christ bought you. So therefore, you no longer have a say over your own life. But thank God that your Lord and Master, Jesus Christ, is also your friend and loves you and has the best for you. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. You know, when I think to myself, well, I'm going to do this, you know, and then, I, then often I think, well, it seems like a good idea, but let's consult with the Lord. And he says, no. And I know that my master is so much wiser than my stupidity. And he knows the future, which I don't know. Hallelujah. So uh, it, it is much better to let him take control over your life than for you to run your life and for you will suffer the consequences of running your own life. He's wiser than you are. Put your hand on your chest and say, he is wiser than I am. So do as you're told. Hallelujah. When you follow Jesus Christ, he will deal with the idols of your heart. The idols of your heart are those things which take you away from the presence of Jesus Christ. There was a young man. He was very rich, and his great love in life was his money. That was the idol of his heart. In Mark 10, 21, Jesus looking at him, and notice these words, loved him. Oh, that's awesome. And said to him, one thing you lack Go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. But he was sad at this word, and went away sorrowful, for he had great 
possessions. Jesus put his finger on the idol of the heart. When Jesus spoke to him, that should have been the most glorious, joy-filled moment of his life where he was given the opportunity of repenting of his idolatry, of the love of money, but instead he walked away in sadness because he loved his possessions more than Jesus. To follow Jesus, you must be willing to do exactly what he says, to do just that. To follow him. It may mean breaking with family and cultural expectations. Jesus said to another, Follow me. But he said, But, so many buts in this world. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Completely reasonable request, right? Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. You know, there are many things in your life that are dead things. People said this, people did that. Let the dead bury their own dead. Forget it. Just leave it and go and preach the kingdom of God. Go and follow Jesus Christ. Let the dead bury their own dead. Let them look after their own rubbish and let's press on in Jesus Christ. Finally, once you start following Jesus, don't look back. Because if you look back, you are not fit for the kingdom of God. Once you have put your sight on him to follow him, don't look back with regret. Oh, if only. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have done this. Letting doubts come in. Jesus said in Luke 9, 61, and another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but, but, there's that but, let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. So Jesus said, come follow me. He's saying, well, let me turn around, go back to my house and say goodbye to the family. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Once you start following Jesus Christ, you may get persecution from loved ones and family. You may get persecution from colleagues. You, now that you have begun, you keep going. You keep going. You keep going. You press through the persecution. You press through the mockery. You press through the difficulties and you follow Jesus Christ. Otherwise, you are not fit for the kingdom of God. You have to love him with all your heart. You, you know, Jesus told the parable of the man who found a great treasure and he, he hides it in the field and he goes, sells all that he has and buys, in joy, buys that field so that he could have that treasure. You know, to find Christ, to know Jesus is the greatest treasure in all the world and it is worth the persecution. It is worth all the stuff that goes on. It is worth it to know him. Don't look back. Look to Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, may your vision of him be blinkered. Praise God. Let's, let's pray. God loves you. He loves you. Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed his blood for you. He atoned for your sin. By his stripes you were healed. That is the love of God. By his stripes you were delivered. The cancer is gone. The deafness is gone. He's a loving God. Thank you, Lord. Blindness is gone. He's a wonderful God. He's a wonderful God. Why don't you follow him today? If you want to follow Jesus Christ, just open your heart to him right now and say this prayer, Lord Jesus, I want to know you. I want to know you. Forgive me for my sin. And tell the Lord what your sin is. If it's a sexual sin, any sexual activity outside of a husband and wife is sin according to the Bible. Is it lust? Is it uh, greed? Is it the love of money? Is it gossip? Is it slander? Unforgiveness? Hatred? Resentment? Uh, witchcraft? Looking at horoscopes? Palm reading? watching violent movies, 
entertaining yourself with darkness and stuff that Jesus would never sit and watch with you? Is it gossiping on Facebook? Right now, confess your sins to him because he loves you. He died to forgive you and cleanse you from all your mistakes, all your errors, all your sin, all your iniquity. He took upon himself that you might be cleansed and healed. Now say, Father, I thank you. I believe that I am forgiven. But the blood of Jesus has cleansed me. This is my prayer of faith. I believe in Jesus Christ. Lord, give me the grace to know you, to abide in you, and to follow you with all my heart, a heart of love, true love. Amen. Amen. God bless you. If you said that, heart, that prayer from your heart, you are born again. You are made anew. And whoever puts their faith in him will never be put to shame. Thank you, Lord. Elaine Surin, you've been located by the Holy Spirit. Hey, Pastor Mark. Hello, Elaine. What do you need Jesus to do for you? Um, I'm believing for creative miracles for my dad and mom. My dad needs a new heart. His heart is only functioning at 37%. And uh, uh, my mom, uh, for a creative miracle, for a new spleen and a new pancreas for, for her. Yeah, I don't know uh, about creative miracles. I just know the healer does it all. Amen. 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 You've been located by the Holy Spirit, so we trust you, Lord. We trust you, Father. We might bring up someone on the monitor as well, thanks. That's the power of God entering. That's the power of God entering. Power of God is coming on your parents. Yes, Lord. Power of God is coming on your parents. Coming on your parents. Coming on your dad. Coming on your dad. In Jesus' name. Power of God is, thank you, Lord, going into his heart. Going into his heart. Thank you, Lord. Oleg's going to pray for the Father with his heart condition. Thank you, Oleg. Yes, Lord. We we'll praise you, Lord. Thank you for being with us today, Lord. In your mighty name, we command healing of the heart, the full restoration of the heart, the full function of the heart, Lord. Yes. We give you praise, Lord. Just trust you, Lord. Only you can do that, Lord. In your mighty name, let it be done. Let it be accomplished. Let your Lord God come back void, Lord. We know that. And we stand, Lord, in faith with our sister that her father is healed and his heart is healed in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. So I think Elaine is frozen, but um, that's the power of God on the heart. Yes. So we thank you, Lord, for healing of both Amen. of them. This is what we believe. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. So Elaine, isn't it? Elaine, uh, you're frozen, but take your hand and put it like this. Amen. Put your hand like this, Elaine, so I can see your hand. So she's, that's right. Your father's heart is in your hand, in the spiritual realm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. We command the heart to be renewed, to be restored. We command the bleeding to cease, yes. the bleeding in the heart to cease in, in the mighty name yes. of Jesus Christ. Yes. I believe your dad's okay. You. I believe your dad's okay. Amen. Amen. That's the power of God on your mother's organs. We thank you for total healing. Amen. Amen. So, Elaine, what did you feel as we were praying for your father's heart? Um, I can feel the fire of God here, and I feel a, a peace. 
Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Elaine. God bless you. Hello. Hi, hi Nancy. What do you want Jesus to do for you? Um, I'd like healing in my shoulder. I have shoulder pain and it runs into my, through my, into my face and into my neck. And How long you had this for, Nancy? Uh, almost 40 years. I mean, it, it started when I was 23 when I broke my clavicle, but it's been the pain probably at least 20 years. Do you believe that Jesus will do this? But I, yes. Yes, Amen. I believe he'll heal me. Amen. 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 That's the power of God on your shoulder. It's your right shoulder, right? The power mm -hmm. of God on your right shoulder. It's the power of God on it. Oh, um, Oleg's going to pray for you. Yes. Nancy, question for you. Are you in discomfort right now? Can you sense any pain? Yes. Most of the pain, it's, it's here and it goes up into my face. In the name of Jesus. We command this pain to go away right now. We command the healing of the shoulder on that side of that neck. We command it right now in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father, and we glorify your name in Jesus' name. Are you feeling any difference? It's still tight. So, um, so, Nancy, that's the power of God. Thank you, Oleg. I'm joining my faith with yours. So, Nancy, that's the power of God on your shoulder. Um, I'm seeing something looks like arthritis. That's the power of God on the bone. Inflammation. you got inflammation. Um, I don't know what I'm looking at, but uh, muscles, tendons, I don't know what it is, but... Yeah. Inflammation oh, there. Nerves. Thank oh, you, yeah. Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Okay, begin to move your shoulder. That's right. So say, thank you, Jesus, for your healing. Thank you, Jesus, for your healing. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Okay, you'll find a greater ease in it now. Just move it. There you go. Talk to me. Uh, it feels loose. It feels looser. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah, I'm seeing it well. Just lift your hand up in the air. That's right. Chuck it around. Throw it around. Is that Aussie? Chuck it around. Chuck it. How's that? Pretty good. Pretty good. Who healed you? Jesus. Jesus did. We honour your faith, Nancy. And I want to encourage everyone, you, when you go from the meeting, you come in faith, leave in faith, okay? If the devil tries to put symptoms on you, just reject them and say, I'm healed in Jesus' name, by his blood, by his stripes, I'm healed. Amen. Amen. I'm healed. All right, Nancy, God loves you. Seeing someone, you have reproductive, a lady with reproductive problems, uh, ovaries, I think it is. Uh, where are you? And Maria, we'll pray for Maria. What's the problem, Gladness? I was diagnosed with herpes mm -hmm. and human papillomavirus. The human papillomavirus caused abnormal cell changes in my cervix. Um, intraepithelial lesions in my cervix. You ready to be healed? Yes, sir. Who's going to heal you? Jesus. Jesus. Do you have a problem with rejection, growing up, that type of thing? Um, I believe so. In what way have you experienced rejection in life? Uh, my parents. How did you experience rejection with your parents? I feel like sometimes my feelings weren't validated. What about relationships? Uh, I did end a relationship last year. I did. 
You ready to follow Jesus? Yes, sir. You ready to abide in him? Yes, sir. And he in you? Yes, sir. I'm seeing a man. He's in the church. You know him. People hold him with esteem or whatever, but his personal life is ungodly. It seems to me he's in leadership, eldership or something like that in your church. So not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, is the real deal. It may be that this person is speaking into your life. All right. So uh, prophecy exposes all sorts of stuff. Thank you, Lord. That's the power of God going into you. Power of God going into you. We'll bring up another prayer helper. Thank you, Oleg. Power of God going into you. That's the mighty power of Jesus Christ flowing through you, flowing through your cervix, flowing through your abdomen. The mighty power of Jesus Christ. I see his power all over you, all over you, all over you. The power of Jesus Christ healing you. Lord, we thank you that every abnormal cell is being healed. Laura, put out your hand as if you were laying hands on her abdomen and pray. Lori. Father God, I, I command all infirmity to get out of her abdomen that she would be healed in Jesus' name, that she would be made new, she'd be washed clean, that your mm -hmm. ah, just just fill her and flood through her, Lord. Just, just crash through her. She on the sodium. Oh, the power of God just washed through you. There it is. There it is. Can you feel that? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. What does that feel like? Gladness? It's very overwhelming. Thank you, Jesus. Thank very you, Lord. I believe you're okay. Come back and share your testimony, okay? Yeah. Praise God. We were going to talk to Maria, weren't we? Is she still on the page? Give us a wave. There she is. What's the problem, Maria? Hello, Pastor Mark. I've got um, cysts on my ovaries, on my womb, and uh, they're currently investigating me for cancer. It's a lie. The truth is Jesus Christ. Amen. Put all fear behind you. It's power, God, coming on your ovaries. You're, you're the one I was looking at. Problem with your ovaries. You've got uh, a growth in both ovaries. Is that right or not? Many cysts, yes. It's power, but God, coming on your ovaries. You believe that Jesus will do this? Lori, yes, go ahead yes, and pray. Oh, Jesus, just just fill her again, Lord. Just the, just the power upon her, Lord. Oof. Just, just wash through her. Just wash through her. Everything that's not supposed to be there, just go. Just go. And the blessing, the full blessing of the Lord be upon you. The full blessing be over you. That's the power of God on the womb and the ovaries. Power of God on the womb and the ovaries. Um, you're going to feel something happening right now as the power of God is on you. You're going to feel something happening in your abdomen. Thank you. What do you feel happening, Maria? I just feel power of God on me. What Nothing does that mean? Particular. Just. Um, Sort of like it. <laughs> it's hard to describe. <laughs> it's like you're lit up with like a light bulb. So that's the power of God on you right now. Thank you for removing those cysts, Lord. I believe you're okay. I believe you're okay. Thank you. Fear not, the Word of God says. Christine Jean, let us talk to Christine. Christine, yeah. I'm seeing someone that you are distant from, estranged, distant from. I think it's a relative. Can you, do you know who that person is? I'm fairly estranged. Like, I'm not close with my siblings. 
I see the power of God. It's like cattle herding. <laughs> I'm seeing the Lord herding them, and they're getting closer and closer to you. Amen. What do you think of the Holy Spirit, Laurie, as a cattle herder? Yes. He, he herds <laughs> the family he together. Yeah. He knits us together in love. That's the power of the Holy <laughs> Spirit coming on you. Christine. Christine. <laughs> That's the power of God coming on you, coming on you, coming on you. The, the estrangement and distance from family members is a demonic thing. It's a spiritual thing. Yes. We cut it off. Mm. We command you in Jesus' name, get out of Christine's life and all the family. This is a curse that brings division amongst the family. We rebuke it in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Lord. Christine comes back to share of the reuniting and fellowship in the family. Amen. Thank you so much. God knows. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God knows where you are. He does. He does. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God is good, isn't he? Prabhi, what troubles your life? Uh, I have a pain in my heart. I think it's it's my heart area at the back, and uh, I'm here for that as well as one of my friends. Uh, I mean, person that I know, he's having um, cancer, and he has uh, doctors have given him few months to live. I hope he's there, even if he's not there. I came for him as well. That asking God for uh, healing for him as well as my heart as well and my marriage as well. And your marriage. Yes. I mean, um, my husband and I are Christians, but uh, we've been having uh, issues like, um, yeah. So, Prabhi, when you were located by the Holy Spirit, what was the question I asked you? What did you come for? What, no. What did you come? The question I asked you was, what troubles your life? Okay. It was a prophetic question. What troubles your life? Because I'm seeing the conflict with your husband. The tension, the fighting. Disagreements in the spirit. Um, uh, we have uh, disagreements about what children watch and, uh, and even what he's watching. And uh, on the on the computer laptop and all that, and I'm seeing Jesus, and he weeps. I'm seeing Jesus in your house, and he weeps over your house. And he is the one who has asked the question: What troubles your life? Your troubles are his troubles, because he loves you. I'm going to ask um, my daughter Sarah just to come a moment and talk to us, Sarah, about love and forgiveness. So, because, you know, we can focus on the issues, but Jesus is focused on the heart, whether we walk in love and forgiveness. Um, I would encourage you, Prabhi, to meditate on uh, 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter. And um, first read it as the way that Jesus loves us. He's patient, he's kind, he is long-suffering um, towards us. And then once you receive a, a revelation of that, then you're able to love those around you um, who disagree with you. Um, you're able to love your husband better and you don't need to agree with everyone in order to love them. Love rides above everything. Love covers a multitude of sins. Um, love covers our differences. And it's the grace of God that enables us to love in that way. So it's all about, thank you, it's all about loving. Now, your husband, he has an anger problem and it's because 
he is angry about what happened to him as a child. That's where it comes from. So it, it's resulted in a spirit of anger and it, it just festers under the surface. And he doesn't like other people trying to control him and tell him what to do. Okay, so what troubles your life? Well, what brings comfort to your life is Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we believe that through prophecy, Prabhi's life, there's peace in Jesus' name. That's the Lord healing the heart condition. That's the Lord healing the heart condition. Lord, healing the heart condition. Now, just breathe it out. Breathe it out. Breathe it out. That's the pain coming out of your heart, out of your mouth, in Jesus' mighty name. That's it coming out, it's coming out, it's coming out, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thanks, Lori. Uh, the Lord is putting um, an anointing balm on your heart, just, just healing your heart and your mind and your spirit. There would be unity and accord in your family that he's going to give you as a, a spirit of forgiveness and... <laughs> Mm. Prabhi, you are delivered. You are delivered. Thanks, Laurie. We're just working together. You are delivered. What did you feel happen, Laurie, when you were uh, Prabhi, when you were prayed for? <laughs> She's under the power of God. I think God taking away my sadness out. <laughs> You feel God taking away your sadness because he sees your trouble. What troubles your life has troubled Jesus and he has the salve at Calvary for your heart. It's not just your physical heart that's been healed, but your, your soul, your soul is being healed. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to leave you under the balm of Jesus. How are you, Grace? Good, good. About two or three years ago, the Lord delivered you, yes. set you free of depression. You were unable to look after the baby at that time because you were so depressed. So uh, how's life since then? Yeah, it's been, it's been really good was good. I really enjoyed. I enjoyed how the Lord has changed my life. It was really good. I thank you. How are your finances? Good. Actually, I had, I wanted to share three testimonies today, but let's, yeah. let's talk about your finances because uh, in prophecy, the Lord showed that you had financial problems and that he was bringing blessing. So what happened? Yeah, actually, our finances, it's been good. It's been good. And um, my husband stopped working last year. And then um, I came, and all this time he's not been working. And then uh, Joe Lupi and Paul Lupi and Anthony prayed for my husband. And then after a few days, he got a job and he's now working. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. Anything else you want from the Lord? Yeah, I just, I came for two prayer requests. Um, I want the Lord to touch my sister's child. He's sick and he's, she's in the hospital. The doctors say that she has uh, pneumonia. And then the other second prayer request is uh, my friend. The child got diabetes. So your sister's child, that's your niece, this is a uh, spirit of sickness, that's the, that's the Lord, that's heaven coming into the room, into the hospital room. Heaven's come into the hospital room. That's the power of God filling the hospital room. Power of God coming on the baby now, coming on the baby. That's the power of God reaching into the baby's lungs. Power of God's reaching into the baby's lungs. In Jesus' name, the baby is set free. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I can hear the baby breathing. 
The lungs are restored in Jesus' Amen. name. Brian and Ruth will pray. Yes, yes. Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your servant, Lord God. Your, that right now, Father, we pray for the child with the diabetes. We just command all. We bind up the sickness, the spirit of infirmity. Get off it in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus. We command the sickness to bow. Bow in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We apply your blood of washing, cleansing the baby inside all the blood of cleansing. We thank you, Lord, your blood. We thank you. We proclaim the total healing for this diabetes, Lord. We thank you. Mercy, Heavenly Father. We thank you. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Have you got a mass, Ruth? Yeah, I've got a one inch um, cancer in my upper left kidney. That's the power of God on you, Ruth. That's Thank the power you. of God on the cancer. Okay, we'll Thank have uh, power of God on the cancer. Do you believe, Ruth, Thank that you. Jesus will do this? Yes, yes. Thank you. That's yes. all, all that's necessary. Now listen to this. Cancer is nothing. Yes, cancer yes. is nothing. Yes. Thanks, Brian and Ruth. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just bind up the cancer in Jesus' mighty name. We bind it up in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the total healing. We command the healing stay. We thank you, Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you. Eva, hello. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. So, Eva, what do you want Jesus to do for you? Uh, heal my son, Daniel, from autism. Okay. Daniel, in Jesus' mighty name, we command it out, out of his head, out of his head, in Jesus' mighty name, out, out of his head. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we take you under the authority of Jesus' name, out of his head. Eva, I'm seeing your boy sleeping. The Lord's going to put him in a supernatural sleep. So I know he has his normal sleep schedule, but he's going to go into a supernatural sleep. Don't wake him. Just okay. leave him. He's under divine surgery. Don't wake him up for anything. Just leave him. I believe the Holy Spirit is healing his brain. Okay? Amen. That's what I believe. Just, Amen. just leave him. Let him sleep. It, Amen. it may not necessarily okay. be today that I'm talking about, but there'll be a day, it could be tomorrow, where he'll go to sleep. Just leave him. It's, it's just Amen. the Lord restoring his mind. Amen. And we join with faith you. with you and your husband. Amen. Amen. He's already healed. Amen. What's that? He's already healed. <laughs> he is already healed. Amen. God loves you. So, Juan and Patty, uh, tell me, what's <laughs> life been like? You know, you've been, we've been working together, Juan and Patty, uh, event organisers in California, and have been involved in senior prayer helpers. Uh, but things are taking off, street ministry, church work. Uh, tell us a little bit, please. It's been exciting to see the Lord move in so many different ways. We recently, uh, we recently went to uh, join a local Jewish temple to worship Shabbat and learn how to honor God like the Jewish people do. And uh, it was just such a beautiful experience. Wow. And the Lord is just calling us to bring that one new man under Christ together and just join with our Jewish brothers and sisters. So it's been very beautiful to see what the Lord is doing in the community. So we're excited. And uh, it's been a blessing to serve in Jesus Encounter Ministries. Did you know, uh, Juan, that I'm Jewish on my father's side? I did not know that. There you go. And uh, they changed my name back in the 13th century before I was around uh, from Hyman to Hemans because of persecution, anti-Semitism. So, uh, so tell us uh, how being part of a team has affected your lives, your ministry. Go come ahead, on, Patty. Patty, come um, on. 
just been a blessing uh just seeing god uh do so many mighty things i think that uh just getting out of my comfort zone quite a bit uh <laughs> definitely um just believing in the lord for just so many mighty things that he's just been doing just my faith has been like just growing <laughs> yeah. awesome uh, and, and you guys have been those. you guys have been on the streets doing evangelism tell us about that yeah, so we've uh, gone out into the streets recently. Um, we've just encountered uh, just many people as we uh, walk through, uh, you know, just uh, marketplaces. Uh, we were able to minister to a woman who'd uh, recently been widowed, and uh, she was just uh, believing the lie of the enemy that um, she hadn't cared for him in his, um, in his illness and that that had led to his death. So we just spoke the truth of God into her life. Uh, she was walking into the gym right before we encountered her. And she just said, I needed to hear that it wasn't um, me that had caused his death. So it was, she just, that changed her whole outlook that for the, you know, just for the rest of her life, I'm sure. And just um, going door to door, we met a gentleman who was in so a wheelchair. So Patty and Juan, you know how I interrupt people. Um, <laughs> I, I'm seeing, I'm seeing the Lord uh, laying hands on you, standing behind you. He's putting his left hand on Juan's left shoulder, right hand on you. And uh, that's his love and his presence in the room. And I'm feeling the love of God in your room, the wonderful love of God, the wonderful love of God. Patty, I'm seeing fire in your eyes. This is a fire to see the word of God, prophecy. Fire to see the word of God because fire burns. So the word of God will go forth burning through the things that, burning right down to the things that are hidden in people's lives, you will see. When Jesus comes again, he will come with flames of fire in his eyes. So receive what is Jesus. Prophecy, prophecy, prophecy. Thank you, Lord. And one, I'm just seeing it's like it's a heavenly covering over you. It's an, an anointment that we don't know on earth, so I can't describe it. But I'm seeing you covered with this anointment, oint, this anointment cream. It's like almost like a cream all over you. What do you feel happening, Juan? I feel the presence of God and just touched me. And I just felt like crying right now when you said Jesus was touching me. I just feel my heart stirred for the Lord, for he has a great burden for his people, his lost people to come back home. That's that anointing on cream on you. Jimmy, just come up here for a moment. Come on, Michael. We're going to pray for Michael. Your past has caused a disruption in your thought processes, in your brain-mind function. This is spiritually based in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We loose you, Michael, from every hindrance of the mind. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus. There it goes. Coming out. It's coming out. It's coming out. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Loose your grip from him. Loose yourself from him. You're free. You're free of that thing. Go home and think clearly, bro. What did you feel happen? Oh, uh, just a... Uh, oh, I'm still feeling it. <laughs> uh, let you go home. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sandra, what do you want from the Lord? Sandra with um, the kids. This is Cameron. I... I was interceding for him a couple months ago, and two weeks from now, he is scheduled for open heart surgery. 
it's my nephew. Mm. And he has, I think it's called Tetralogy of the Law. He had open heart surgery as an infant. So he has valves that kind of recirculate and um, just he needs a new heart. What's his name, Cameron? Cameron is correct. Cameron, all right. Thanks, Juan and Patty. On the camera. Father Alpha. God. Yes. Father God, we lift up Cameron to you right now, Lord God, and we ask that you apply the atoning blood of Jesus Christ over his heart, Lord. Heal every infirmity, every sickness, everything that's out of alignment, put it back into alignment now, Lord. Lord, we ask you to cover him with head, from head to toe right now with your glory, Lord, with your glory, Lord. In the presence of your glory, there is the healing power. There is the mercy of God. Lord, you are our healer, Lord, and we give you all the thanks, honor, and praise for what you're doing for him now, Lord. That's the power of God going inside of him right now. That's the power of God touching him right now. Lord, do spiritual surgery on him, Lord, that his valves will be restored, that his heart will function, and that he will live a full, complete life. For by your stripes, he was healed, Lord. So we apply, Father God, what you did on the cross for us over Cameron right now, Lord God. And we declare him healed and made whole. That's the power of God coming stronger over Cameron right now. That's the power of God touching him right now. Cameron, how are you feeling? Good. <laughs> Do you feel like a warm sensation inside you? Yeah. That's Jesus. He loves you. He's going to make you better. He loves you. So, Lord, we thank you for Cameron's complete healing. This is what we believe, Lord. In Jesus' name, we praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, yes. bless her, we pray. In Jesus' name. Prosper her, Lord, we pray. And um, the little gal, Sophia, also gets migraines almost weekly. In the name of Jesus Christ, we rebuke migraines. In the name of Jesus Christ, we rebuke, rebuke migraines. In, get off her. In Jesus' mighty name. All depression, all discouragement, despondency, we command off Sophia. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. She's ever, forever healed. We're going to talk to Keith. There he is over here. Hello, young man. Here we go. Good to see you, Keith. Yep, smiling. Tell us about Abby or Abigail, your granddaughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my granddaughter. Uh, when she, by the time she was three, uh, she had not uh, properly spoken. Uh, she had a very strong behaviour. So, what was the okay. problem with with uh, with Abigail? Uh, well, she had all the signs of autism. Okay, so uh, what were the problems? Uh, uh, no, no eye contact, uh, non-verbal, no, didn't speak, um, very strong, uh, irrational behaviours, uh, very demanding uh, uh, behaviour tantrums. So what were the and tantrums like? Three. Erratic, strong-willed, uh, demanding, um, and they're the classic signs of autism. Uh, would only wear one set of clothes. You, if you tried to put her in another set of clothes, she wouldn't wear them, and she would throw a tantrum. And uh, very non-verbal, wasn't communicating, would not communicate through the eyes. Okay, so she, she wasn't talking, no eye contact, Typical yeah, yeah. Or autism symptoms. So you came yeah. to a meeting in Pocono, is that right? Yes, in New Zealand. Just near Auckland. What do you need from the Lord? My daughter is showing signs of autism. Your daughter is showing signs of autism. Praise God. So uh, what are the signs? Uh, poor verbal communication and ability to have a back and forth conversation like her peers. Hmm. Non-verbal signs, uh, inability to point, wave. Okay. We believe that you're located for a reason. Yeah. Okay. Praise God. And where's your husband? Wonderful. Just stand, sir. Just stand there. That's fine. Yeah, just stand as an act of faith. All right. Thank you, Lord. Let's reach out our hands. What's your girl's name? Abby. Abby. 
Mm, thank you, Lord. Sister, you feel that? On, come yes. here. You feel that on your hands? Yes, I can. You, hey? Yes, I can. You can. That's the power of God. Just move back a little bit with the baby. Move back. That's it. Let her have, that's the power of Jesus Christ going yes, yes. through your hand. What does Whoa. that feel like? Whoa. Child's being healed. That's what Just we believe. Feels, sort of tingly and lovely. And, right. Yeah. Praise God. That's, yeah. that's the power of God going through you. Power of God going through you. That's the power of God going through the, the girl. Thank you, Lord. Power of God going through the girl. Power of God going through the girl. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. Power of God going into her brain. Thank you, Lord. Power of God going into the girl's brain. That's the spirit in her brain coming under the power of God. Spirit in the brain coming under the power of God. Spirit in the brain coming under the, the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There it goes. Coming out. It's coming out. In Jesus' name. I think she's all right. Okay. Send us an email, all right? Hey? It's hot. It's hot. <laughs> Hey? She's clapping. Is that unusual? Yes, because that's imitating. See, we were all clapping and she clapped. I, I believe she's okay. <laughs> I believe she's okay. Yes. And uh, that was in uh, 2019, I think. Correct, yes. And uh, tell us what happened in the meeting. Well, the, the, <laughs> the meeting was a public hall meeting. It was cold because it was winter. Uh, there was a, quite a big crowd. Uh, you called uh, my daughter up. Uh, she was the third person you called up. Uh, now you had went... come. You had come with the whole family. Is that right? The whole tribe had yes, come. We... Who came? Uh, myself, my wife. I brought a person from my hometown, which is Tokaroa, who was in a wheelchair. My son-in-law, daughter and uh, the granddaughter, and I think they had the little child with them too. Wow. So the Holy Spirit located uh, your family. So tell us what happened. Well, when, when we went up to the front and you asked, and she was holding the child in her arms. Abigail. Yeah, Abigail. And we, and we said, well, okay, what's wrong? And you said, and I can still remember it, <coughs> God is healing her brain function. Yes. And that was all that you prayed for her. That's all I said. That was all you said. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. But so we went home. So we traveled to our different locations. <clears throat> and the next day on the phone, uh, when, when we rang up to find out what had happened, the little girl got on the phone and for the first time she spoke and she said, hello, Papa. Wow. What did, what yeah. did you feel when you heard Abigail, your granddaughter, say, hello, Papa? Oh, I, I was overjoyed because she had never spoken to me before and she was very clear. Yeah, now, I... I Go on, go her, on. Her, her enunciation, her clarity of speaking was very clear. Now, I spoke to you on the phone. There's been incredible changes since that day. She's now five and a half or, or almost six. So what yes. are some of the changes you've seen since that day of prayer? Uh, <coughs> excellent communication. Uh, excellent eye contact. In other words, she's engaging with people. Uh, a lot more confidence. Uh, she's going to school. She's mixing with children. Uh, <clears throat> she has a very, very high brain capability. Say we that again. Her. Say that again. Just, just in case someone missed that little comment about an uh, autistic girl having yeah. what? A uh, very, very high uh, spoken capability. Her, her knowledge for a five-year-old is outstanding. She has, a, she has a photographic memory. You can show her a photograph that you showed her six months ago of people that she's never actually met in the family, 
and she can name them without hesitation. That is yeah. a miracle. Yes. Yeah. And so she's got a photographic memory. Uh, what's yes. her vocabulary like? Uh, well, <laughs> I was sitting with her one day and there was some object and I think it was like a long pipe or a broom handle. I was trying to remember what it was that we showed her. And I said, Abby, what is this? Do you know what her reply was? She said, it's a cylinder. It's a cylinder. <laughs> so she, you're on the, on the phone, you were telling me that she's very intelligent. Tell me more about that. Oh, um, well, the two things I've just said are probably uh, uh, indicated. Uh, she has an excellent vocabulary. She knows words fluently. Uh, and um, uh, the other thing is yeah, she's, she's very normal. She's back to normal. She's very normal. Yes. Mixing. No, the behavior. 99% of the behaviors are now no longer there. And she mixes at school. Um, yeah, she's... She's stunning. <laughs> stunning. You know, stunning you know, Keith, the work of Jesus is absolutely stunning. Praise God. We're, we're going to hear from Judith again. Judith, come and, come and tell us why this is a miracle. It is a miracle because when you think of autism, you just have to learn to manage them according to what the book says. But to say the child has improved so much that the child who never spoke is speaking, yeah. it's only Jesus who can do it. If they are nonverbal, yes. they remain nonverbal, according to the books. You can yes. improve them by trying to do all the other tricks, but what is saying the grandfather, that's purely a miracle, God doing it. And it's only yes. Jesus who can do it. Thank you, Judith. Were you believing that Jesus would intervene? How were you preparing spiritually? Um, well, we've walked in the, as a family, we've walked in the Lord for a long time. I, I've been, I, I first met Jesus when I was very young, although I did not know who Jesus was. And so he's been uh, our um, foundation for a long time. And, and so, and my family also walk in the Lord. And, and so um, my daughter hunted you out. She found you. I don't know how she found you. And she said, we're going to your meeting. And we said, yes, we will go with you. And we went to your meeting. I had ne never met you before. And Praise God. Up and the healing took place. Thank you, Jesus. So you've had a lifetime of trusting in Jesus as your foundation in every problem. Yes, God has been good all the time in every instance. So although you've been a Christian all your life, have you ever had any problems in life? Uh, well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so you can have problems and be a friend of Jesus. Amen, yes. And Jesus because is still your firm foundation. You, you, the Lord, one of the scriptures says, My sheep hear my voice. And they follow. And when you hear the voice of the Lord in whatever way, you are encouraged and you are built up. God is your friend. And when he talks to you, you hear him. Do you know, yes. uh, you know Keith, you're prophesying? Because Amen. that's one of my main scriptures for my yes. preaching today. Thank you, Lord. Is the voice of Jesus. Says, you can yep. trust his voice. Amen. Keith, did yes. you know that the voice of Jesus is the word of God? Amen. Yes. It's been an honor to talk with you, Keith. Amen. I'm and Keith, I want to more. prophesy that I'm going to see you in a miracle meeting in the Auckland area. Amen. I'll be looking forward to it. All right. We'll, we'll be looking for you. Hello, Keith. Is that the granddaughter? Oh, this is Abby. Abigail, is it? Abby, yes. How are you, Abigail? Good. Good. How old are you, Abigail? Five. Five. Do you go to school? Yes. You do. What, what's your best class in school? What do you like doing the most? Um, rockets. Rockets. You like making rockets, do you? Yes. 
Awesome. And in the playground, what do you like to do? They run the slide. You like going down the slide? Yes. And when you're with Grandpa, what do you do with Grandpa? Um, do you go to the park? Yes. We're going for a walk on the river tomorrow. Oh, really? Yep. yep. Abigail, what's your favourite book? Uh, Peppa Pig. Peppa Pig. Yep. Peppa Pig. Oh, Peppa Pig. My grandson loves Peppa Pig. (laughs) (laughs) She she has a gluten issue. Can we pray for her? Sure. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Abby, do you believe that Jesus will heal you? Yes. 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 Grandpa's going to put his hand on your tummy. That's the power of Jesus Christ. Coming through. Healing her. Thank you, Ruth. You can pray for Abby. Putin, yes. Father, we thank you for the daughter Abby. We thank you for the healing. We thank you. Totally be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, your blood and cleansing her top head, the bottom of the feet. We thank you. Holy Spirit, fire the whole body. We thank you. Totally healed in Jesus' mighty name. I believe she's all right, Amen. Keith. I believe she's all right. Yes. Praise God. Well, good to see Abby. We heard a testimony, didn't we, uh, Brian? We did. <laughs> I've never actually uh, met her since the prayer two or three, two years ago. So uh, how awesome is the Lord? We're going to go into the ministry rooms right now. So uh, just remember to keep your prayer request, uh, the sharing, t- limited. Um, just tell briefly. Uh, so that they can get on with praying. Uh, I mean, as you can see, there are times where you don't even need to say anything. The Lord, well, he knows before you say anything, before you open your mouth. Please don't ask the prayer helpers for their contact details. That's not what we do. Put your faith in Jesus Christ and allow him to do the work. So love you all and uh, we'll see you next time. So a big God bless you. Thank you.